good evening everyone myself dr sai gupta and i'm from kalinga institute of medical sciences and i'm presenting a case series and topic is computer tomography and sonography of spleen related complications in sickle cell anemia so coming to the introduction sickle cell disease constitutes a spectrum of hematological conditions caused by genetic mutation affecting the beta globin chain of hemoglobin it is the most common monogenic hemoglobinopathy worldwide with exceptionally high prevalence in sub saharan africa and sub indian subcontinent sickle cell anemic patients harbor unstable rcs that tend to polymerize when deoxygenated the sickling episodes can be triggered by hypoxia dehydration fever high altitudes emotional stress steroids and other medications the sickle polymerized rcs then gets entrapped in small blood vessels thereby blocking them and precipitating episodes of bone chest and sequestration crisis and occasionally dreaded complications such as end organ damage stroke and even permanent blindness although any organ can be affected in sickle cell disease spleen being the filter of blood is virtually involved in all cases and spleen gets involved in sickle cell as early as 6 months of age and by 5 years a substantial proportion of children develop functional splenia coming to the methods over the course of one year the data was collected from the radiology department at kims hospital in bhubaneswar odisha this data encompassed clinical profiles as well as findings from ct and ultrasound including details on management ultrasound studies were done using the volusion s10 machine while ct scans were performed with 64 slice ge optima ct660 imaging was carried out in both the non contrast and post contrast phases with rapid administration of the contrast agent at a rate of 3 to 5 ml per second preferably through a whiteboard cannula so coming to the cases first case a 41 year old man with complaints of sickle with non case of sickle cell anemia presented with acute pain in abdomen and in bilateral lower limbs ultrasound and ct cct was done ultrasound showed splenomegaly with heterogeneous echo texture and on non contrast imaging uh, it showed hyperdense spleen with few hypodense areas within the spleen parenchyma and on contrast study there, there was a large vest shape non enhancing area which suggests splenic infarct splenic infarct and there was also patchy residual area of normally enhancing splenic parenchyma coming to the second case 27 year old male with sickle cell anemia presented with complaints of fever pain abdomen back pain and vomiting for 4 days ultrasound showed heterogeneous splenic parenchyma with multiple hypoglyc round nodules and on uh, non contrast imaging it showed hyperdense fibrosis lay splenic parenchyma with multiple calcium foci and multiple round hypodense nodules while on post contrast these nodules didn't enhance and uh, these nodules could present either extramedullary hematopoiesis or splenic abscess or small infarcts coming to the case 3 a 13 year old male with sickle cell anemia presented with chest and extremity pain uh, ultrasound showed multiple round hypoglyc nodules in the spleen and uh, these uh, these nodules could be either extramedullary hematopoiesis or micro abscess or infarct and uh, cct was done for the same non contrast imaging showed hyperdense spleen with multiple round hypodense nodules and on post contrast studies we can see that nodules become isodense to the splenic parenchyma which confirms that there is uh, enhancement of the nodules these nodules likely represent extramedullary hematopoiesis in parts and microbes uh, would have remained uh, hyperdense on contrast phase as they don't enhance uh, coming to fourth case 50 year old male with sickle cell anemia presented with complaints of blood in sputum and generalized weakness weakness for 12 days uh, on ultrasound uh, it, there was enlarged spleen with heterogeneous parenchyma lipotexture and uh, on uh, ncct we can see that there is diffuse reticular or lace like calcifications within the spleen and there was mild perisplenic fluid was also there and uh, the patient had actually uh, functional asplenia then coming to the fifth case a 19 year old male with sickle cell anemia presented with severe abdominal pain and sudden drop in hemoglobin for the last one day on ultrasound the liver was globular enlargement of the liver with heterogeneous echo texture and uh, on non contrast there was a massively enlarged globular spleen with peripheral reticular calcification and on contrast images there was poorly enhancing areas within and the patient had acute drop in hemoglobin uh and with with sudden onset passive splenomegaly which uh, which coincides with splenic sequestration coming to sixth case 27 year old male with the hbs thalassemia variant presented with complaints of 
bilateral elbow and knee joint pain since monday ultrasound showed small sized ecogenic heterogeneous spleen and on plain ct we can see that there was a solitary calcific foci uh, in a atrophied hyperdense spleen and on post contrast there was non enhancing wedge shaped areas within the spleen can parenchyma this suggests of splenic infarcts so this was a case of splenic infarct and coming to the seventh case a uh, 19 year old male uh, who is a non keno sickle cell anemia present with complaints of pain in chest abdomen and joints for the last two days and uh, on ultrasound uh, the spleen was not visualized and uh, ct was done for the same case and we showed that there was a shrunken completely calcified spleen as we can see and we suggested uh, otosplenectomy uh, so coming to the discussion a number of complications can arise in spleen in sickle cell anemia as illustrated through our case series the most common is changes in spleen size while early in the disease course splenomegaly is more common as the disease progresses spleen usually becomes shrunken and atrophied splenomegaly is usually the result of extramedullary hematopoiesis while shrunken spleen indicates otosplenectomy with functional spleen acute onset splenic splenomegaly is uh, more dangerous than chronic splenomegaly normally the spleen enlarges more along the long axis of the organ however a globular spleen with disproportionate increase in width rather than length may indicate a sudden severe splenomegaly this can occur when the splenic drainage vasculature is occluded by sickle cell leading to the pooling of blood within the splenic parenchyma this complication is called splenic sequestration crisis and it's a dreaded complication of sickle cell anemia a trial of acute drop in hemoglobin sudden onset splenomegaly and intrasplenic parenchymal hemorrhage is highly specific for sequestration crisis uh, other complications are also there and uh, there will be changes in splenic uh, parenchymal ecogenicity and attenuation which are also commonly seen and uh, repeated blood transfusion in sickle cell anemia leads to secondary hematopoiesis hemochromatosis characterized by is by iron deposition in the reticular endothelial system secondary hemochromatosis is seen on ultrasound as an ecogenic liver and spleen and on ct as a hyperdense liver and spleen with attenuation of more than 70 hu and there can be fibrosis within the splenic parenchyma which leads to heterogeneous post eco texture of spleen with heterogeneous enhancement on contrast imaging and there can be gamma candy gamma candy bodies which can form within the spleen which appear as a punctured ecogenic foci this works in the parenchyma calcifications are quite common in sickle cell disease and it can reach from pure scattered pulsive foci to arboriform patterns to dense calcification calcification usually indicates non functional spleen and uh, vasoclusive crisis can lead to splenic infarcts and in on uh, imaging we can see infarcts as wedge shaped hypodensities that do not enhance splenic abscess and microabscess can also form due to depressed immune system abscess typically shows strong peripheral enhancement however microabscesses can be difficult to differentiate from extramedullary hematopoietic lesions and small splenic infarcts on imaging in such cases uh, we should go with clinical and lab correlation such as presence of fever and leukocytosis with aphanesia splenic lesions so uh, coming to treatment uh, treatment of sickle cell anemia is uh, usually supportive blood transfusions blood transfusions are the cornerstone to treat episodes of crisis antibiotic coverage is essential for these patients because of increased risk of infections prevention of infections can also done by vaccination uh, and uh, drugs such as hydroxyurea and cryzanilumab help reduce the frequency of episodes of sickling crisis stem cell transplant can lead to complete cure however comes with its own package of risk and challenges of finding a suitable donor recent researchers are exploring the potential of gene therapy as a promising alternative uh, coming to the results and conclusion uh, imaging of the spleen plays a vital role in monitoring patients with sickle cell anemia ultrasound and ct imaging can detect extramedullary hematopoiesis splenic cell sequestration crisis secondary hemochromatosis splenic abscess parenchymal fibrosis calcifications and otosplenectomy this routine integration of spleen imaging with hematological workup in the management of sickle cell anemia will improve the overall patient care and outcome uh, so these are my references thank you